Welcome to the Kentucky Derby Roundtable presented by Woodford Reserve. There are a lot of factors that go into winning a horse race, including obviously in the Kentucky Derby, big one being stamina. The pace certainly makes the race. How fast they go early could determine how fast they go late and who winds up in the winner's circle the first Saturday in May. Scott Shapiro, Ed DeRosa, Joe Christofek joining you. Scott, we'll start with you. How do you foresee the uh, pace of this year's Kentucky Derby? Yeah, last year we saw Authentic basically go wire to wire, not a lot of early speed, but I think it's going to be different this year, Joe. I expect Caddo River or Rock Your World to set the early tempo, but there are a number of E or EP types that should be involved early and want to be forward. So it could be a contentious pace to set things up from someone from the back. At recent years, without the point system in place and those sprinters stretching out, setting ridiculous fractions up front, we've seen a lot of horses that have been up close to the pace or at least in the middle of the pack win the Kentucky Derby. I don't really see that changing this year. No, I don't either. Justify for me comes to mind. He chased promises fulfilled in his triple crown run in 2018, put him away, and then good magic and audible were just no match for him late. I could see similar tactics maybe being employed here. I agree with Scott on the likely pace setters, who's going to be first or second. To me, then, there's sort of that other battle. What's highly motivated going to do? He was on the lead by default in the bluegrass. There was no pace in that race. What's Hot Rod Charlie going to do? Joel won that race in the Louisiana Derby as a different pilot now. Gate to wire probably not on their mind. A lot of questions. Soup and sandwich can be forwardly placed. To me, that second tier is almost as fascinating as the first tier. I think that Highly Motivated and Hot Rod Charlie were circumstantial. You mentioned it with, high, with Highly Motivated in the Bluegrass Stakes. I'm expecting both of those to sit back off the pace. You mentioned Flavian Pratt taking over for Hot Rod Charlie, not necessarily known as a send rider. And yeah, go ahead. Usually we think of pace. Obviously the front runner is a big part of that, but where's the central quality going to be? I'm sure Brad and Louis are going to have an idea in their head of when they want to make that move. Is it going to be on the back stretch? Is it going to be turning for home? He is versatile, but you don't want someone to get away from you. And a couple of major factors, guys. Scott, a mile and a quarter distance. Stamina is going to come into play. And then the post positions, until we see that draw on the Tuesday before the Derby, we really don't know how it might set up tactically. Yeah, the post positions are huge, especially when there's a lot of speed horses in a race. If you're on the inside and you're a speed horse, you're kind of forced to send. If you're on the far outside, you can kind of look to your left if you're a jock see what your other, horse, other horses around you are doing and make a decision from there. Likely Kentucky Derby favorite essential quality. Ed DeRosa mentioned that that versatility makes him dangerous. He can sit close to the pace if necessary, stalk and pounce if necessary. That's what makes him very dangerous the first Saturday in May, but pace will make the race. The Road to the Kentucky Derby has been presented by Woodford Reserve.